have made it to the Pack Squad season finale for season two. MLB The Show 22. Now, like the first season of Ranked, I ended our pack squads grind with about four or five days left in the season. And I've spent the last few days grinding Ranked. I have nearly a dozen games to break down in today's video. What you are about to watch is the single longest voiceover I have ever and probably will ever record on this channel this is basically gonna be a podcast we have like a dozen games to run through and break down you guys know the squad we're starting off game one with supercharged sandy on the mound team looks pretty good i liked where we left off uh with our episode grind again it's a shame we started the season 0 for 5 we really put ourselves in a hole we have doc versus sandy and we're gonna kick things off in the first inning with two on two down ryan sandberg who is the mvp from season one actually hasn't been that good this season sneaks that one through for an rbi to get this game started into the fourth now sandy was absolutely dealing at this point still has yet to give up a single base runner and with two outs in the fourth a little bit too much plate there with the sinker his creative player pokes one back up the middle and then, as you know it, follows that up with a bomb. Juan Soto with a no-doubter. And after having a perfect game going there, two outs into the fourth inning, we are down by one. But the game was not over there. Into the sixth inning, Sandberg all over a cutter. We just pulled the trigger late. Lines out, out to right. Two outs now. Seager, I power swung there. We line out to right again. Two outs, nobody on. I hit the square power button on that one. Couldn't find a hole. Now the eighth inning. Still a 2-1 ball game. Skipping in deeper here. We're running out of time. And then we follow that up with a ground out from Matt Carpenter. We were actually on that splitter pretty good, but just didn't hit it hard enough. We about hit our opponent in this one 9-3. But we're down 2-1, and you can make it 3-1 our opponent doing damage on his swings we slapped singles all over the place in this one and really just never came through with a big hit with a runner on base here in the top of the nice sandberg's gonna get one back barrels up a cutter makes it a three two ball game so we were not done mookie Betts now bang two front door cutters this inning doc at 90 pitches in the ninth but mookie Betts hits that 415 feet to the wall where it stays in the ballpark and then joe mauer 2-0 count gets jammed on a cutter and we ground out to end the game honestly lots of good swings for us in that game left way too many singles stranded on the base base paths and we start the grind with a loss which means we start this grind in a two-game losing streak after winning four in a row going into that final episode in the blink of an eye we went from in championship series to three games out of championship series game two of this grind we're gonna see logan webb in a created stadium and we've obviously got to get a bound, big bounce back up here jock peterson in with one on nobody out he's gonna hit a hard ground ball back up the middle we chased that change up but got it to go through and then manny machado all over that slider hits it hard but right at the second baseman for a double play and then sandberg once again comes through just like the first game we score our first run on a sandberg jam job single to score a run and we will take that one run lead into the bottom half as we ground out with seager to end the inning bottom of the first this was a uh, very long at bat from Ketel Marte because we got in a freeze off here and then our opponent disconnected. I, I don't know if we were in an actual freeze off there or I was just in a weird lag situation because he quit. But quick win there after scoring one in the top half. Our opponent bounced, gets our rating points back for that second loss, the first loss of this video. And we're going to take this win, try and make it two in a row at home in Coca-Cola Park where Cattel Marte is going to get the party started. A moonshot to right. We've scored one run in all three first innings of our grind so far. Cattel Marte looking like a lead dog, a front runner maybe to be the MVP for the season. Top of the second here, Randy Johnson in, and our opponent was hitting him pretty well early in this game. One run lead definitely wasn't going to be safe in this one. I could tell instantly. He's got that runner on first. He flies out, and then he rolls a two ball to Matt Carpenter. So after getting the leadoff man on, Randy Johnson escapes the jam, jumping straight into the third, where he's going to get one to bleed. 
Again, having tough at-bats, getting balls to land. Joe Morgan almost goes yard there, lefty-lefty. Turned on that fastball. Doc's going to come up with one out. 2-2 two, two count, pops it up, was looking for a ground ball. He got underneath of it. And then Mike Trout, one on, two outs, too much plate, moonshot, crushed over the bullpens and over the Bud Light sign. He gets two runs, goes up by one, and now we're down by one. So just like the entire pack squad season, the beginning of this grind has been a roller coaster. Ups and downs, non-stop. Almost get one to bleed here. Get a little bit of luck. Look at that play. I had to feature this in the highlights. Joe Morgan was sliding for four feet before that ball even got to his glove. He makes the grab. Joe Morgan then strikes out in the fifth. Two straight outs to start the fifth. Doc comes up and strikes out. One, two to Mike Trout, top six. He homered last time up. This time he strikes out over top of a slurve. David Justice gonna come up. He hits lefty, lefty well. Out in front of that slider for a strikeout. And then Randy strikes out Aaron Judge. A great inning right there in the six, right when we needed it, because we've got to start flipping the, mom the momentum in this one. Haven't had much momentum in this game since that home run. We were hitting the ball well early. Only got one run on the Cattell Marte home run, but we had hit some balls hard. And finally, with two outs in the bottom of the six, somebody gets a ball to drop somewhere. Jock drops one in over the wall to tie the ball game at two. Couple batters later, Matt Carpenter gets a good swing here. We hit a double, we ended up over at third on a wild pitch and then we didn't cash in on that extra run. But in the seventh, however, once again, power swinging with two outs, nobody on and Mookie Betts goes out the center. He's got that dead red quirk, man. Not the kind of guy you want to throw sinkers and cutters to in, um, in situations where your opponent may be sitting on a sinker or a cutter because that dead red helps out a lot. So now we have that 3-2 lead. We're deeper into this game, into the eighth. One out, he's going to pop one up. Left side of the field, Victor Arano gets a big out. And then Machado, two batters later with a runner on. A line drive goes off of his glove. Thankfully, it didn't come back to bite us. Machado got another chance there. David Justice popped one up. He makes the play, and we take our lead into the bottom of the eighth. Two out base hit for Jock Peterson, and Machado has a chance to blow this thing open. Rips it into the gap. Sinker in the gut. It's actually a very good pitch, but he rips it all the way to the wall. That'll give us an extra run going into the ninth, or so we thought. <laughs> nice. Thrown out at the plate. 3-2 ball game going into the ninth, so it's going to be as sweaty as you could imagine. First batter comes up. He's going to fly out to right. Taylor Rogers came out to close this one, get the save. This is a must-win game. We lost one to end our season. Then we lose the first game of our grind. A two-game win streak, get both of those back, get us back up to championship series would be vital. Two out single, and then a fly ball to left. For a second there, when that bleeder dropped... If, if man, if I had my face cam on, I really thought we were going to lose. There's just I, you couldn't convince me in the moment that I wasn't giving up a home run to that next batter. Randy Johnson went parallel four post game. Mookie went parallel two, and we have now won two in a row after losing two in a row. Which once again, <laughs> if you've watched all of season two, has just been the trend around here. So moving things along, Randy's going to need a few games before his energy's back up. We are going to throw Pablo Lopez in our next game, where we're going to be facing parallel. 5 Jacob DeGrom we got the game started off right though DeGrom giving up laser beams two knocks and then a Matt Carpenter ground ball where he makes a huge I mean there's a bad animation there on the CPU he also made the mistake of not just flipping it to second in the first place we end up scoring a run on that and then the next batter rolls a double play and all is right in the world we will go to the bottom half with just the one run lead but our opponents created stadium as you're about to see was um, a little bit glitchier than I was I was anticipating baseballs were flying out of this ballpark and I, I couldn't seem to hit the ball more than three feet off, off the ground, as you, as you guys can see. That's a bad swing right there with two outs. We leave that runner stranded. Bottom of the second, Gary Carter goes yard now. So our one-run lead has been evaporated. He's now up by two. He hits that over the VIP deck out and left, and he wasn't done there because with two outs, two strikes, Jacob DeGrom's going to slice one out to left field. And just like that bleeder in the ninth inning of the last game, I thought for certain that was going to come back to haunt us. It didn't, though, but it was a sign of things to come. Doc Peterson in the top of the third laces one into the shift. Again, we got to get the ball in the air in this stadium, and we just were not doing that. 
couldn't seem to find any holes on the infield and eventually as you would expect after a very very long kirk gibson at bat here a great at bat from my opponent taking some good pitches fighting some pitches off and eventually in what i believe is a 3-2 count or is it a long end of a 2-2 it's a long end of a 2-2 he gets one to bleed out in the right center with two outs and jose ramirez is gonna follow that up with a bomb i just i wanted that off the plate a little bit more but what are you gonna do gets a little bit of momentum going there and he homers with jose ramirez suddenly we're down by four and now we're down by five <laughs> i mean when it rains it pours <laughs> getting pummeled in this one anthony rizzo just burying us but the best is yet to come we are two and three to start this grind session not how we imagined things would go i gave myself a little bit more time to grind this one out but a, a handful of late losses here at the championship series bubble have really made things difficult, which means it's time to get hot. Once again, scoring early, Cattel Marte with an RBI double. Jock Peterson's gonna follow that up with an RBI double. Back to back doubles. Second time through the lineup here on Kyle Wright. Manny Machado now, hard ground ball up the middle. Tough play, does make it though. Almost got another run there. Our opponent did score one after we got those two. But uh, as you're about to find out, we're going to continue hitting in this one. We hit that one to the wall with Mookie, and then Joe Maurer laces a ball all the way to the wall for an extra base hit. Puts a runner in scoring position here in the fifth inning with uh, two outs. Could tell Marte, who's already got an RBI double in this game, is going to hit another RBI double. His second extra base hit of the game, his second RBI of the game makes it 3-1 and from there we just pitched our way through this game carlos carrasco at 97 pitches in the eighth this game will get sweaty here lead off single followed up by a double now the tying runs in scoring position with nobody out we go to the bullpen we bring out taylor rogers for anthony rizzo gets him out in front of a slider there we were pounding sinkers and then had him out in front of that slider for the strikeout and now 0-2 on francisco lindor he swings over top of a slider strikeout back-to-back -back strikeouts with those runners in scoring position and then nelson cruz swings over the curveball strikes out the side after having two in scoring position and you know that's just bad luck we immediately homer in the bottom of the eighth after he squandered that opportunity i have been down that road a million times Cattell Marte's third extra base hit of the game his third rbi of the game the mvp of this ball game and we're going to end up winning this one four to one goes down on the check swing there to end the ball game victor arano comes in and gets the save and now we are three and three on our grind session and we are once again on the doorstep of championship series can we win a couple games in a row at this stage let's try again sandy on the mound but this one was a straight up pitcher's duel in cores we're skipping all the way into the eighth inning where salvador perez rolled his chapman three two count and a moonshot to center is gonna be the first run of this ball game and honestly the reason i'm skipping all the way to the eighth in this one wasn't much to show you this was a legitimate pitcher's duel sandy was dotting he was dotting me up there wasn't a lot of hard contact either way this was one of those first to score wins we end up getting an insurance run on a moonshot for manny machado in the ninth Corey seager even hits a ball pretty hard here but got a little bit underneath of it flagged that ball down out and left we win this ball game not without uh not without a little bit of sweatiness though we go to david price out of the pen he gets a ground ball to start things off and then nolan arenado comes up and Nolan Arenado sneaks one past Manny Machado at third. Next batter's going to take a walk, and suddenly he can walk this thing off. Two on, one out. Eddie Matthews flies out to the warning track, and here it is. Jock Peterson. I went to Kenley Jansen, and he pinch hit Jock Peterson. So this is not the matchup you want. I tried to pitch around him. Really wasn't going to give him anything to hit. We end up walking him. Brings up the pitcher slot. He pinch hits Jose Ramirez, and then Jose Ramirez in the one-two count. Takes a tough slider there. Next pitch, fouls that one off. Gonna go back to that cutter. Fouls that one off again. You know where this is going, right? Ground ball, base hit, sneaks through. It's a one run ball game and Kenny Lofton's at the plate. Kenny Lofton can win it with one of those trademark bleeders. 
It's 2-2. Two, two. And he pops it up to shortstop. He almost did it. If that ball lands out in left field, it's GG. Game over. See you later. But finally, we knock down the door. We break down the wall. And pretty much the entire team went up in parallel. I actually, you saw Al Leiter went up parallel there. I used Al Leiter out of the bullpen halfway through that game because I forgot to warm up a lefty. So I went to Al Leiter uh, for a spot um inning and he ended up going up parallel so now we have finally gotten into the championship series after playing what felt like 15 games between 740 and 790 and we are looking to make it a three game win streak it's from win two lose two win two lose two will that continue probably mike trout in the top of the first with a moonshot off of randy johnson who has been figured out in season two He's up to parallel four, but my guy is getting crushed lately. Two run ball game early is not what you want to see. And the worst part about this was this was my first time ever seeing JR Richard. Uh, Richard, so I, I also had to go through an adjustment period in this one where I just couldn't seem to figure this man out. It's three nothing in the top of the second. My opponent's going to make it four on a no doubter from Cattell Marte. He just continued to hit the whole game. Uh, I don't think he had any home runs after this Cattell Marte homer, but he was just dinking singles and doubles all over the place, and we ended up losing another one. So once again, we get knocked back out of the championship series, and the adversity that we continue to face, win two, lose two, win two, lose two. We've got to turn it into win three, lose one, win three, lose one. That's how you make World Series. Once again, we are down one early. Hits an opposite field home run. Another creative stadium here, though, where the ball's going to fly. And I knew that immediately based off of his home run and a couple foul balls. Matt Carpenter's going to fly out to the wall. That was actually gone if it wasn't for how tall the right fielder was. Matt Carpenter grounds out up the middle. Mike Mussina hits him well here early in the game. We got a runner in scoring position with two outs. And Cattell Marte off the end of the bat. Um, so now, I mean, I feel like there's been 20 lead changes in this video just in the first six or seven videos of uh, games of this video alone. 2 1 ball game. Machado now goes the other way. Machado, man, if it wasn't for some of these air balls, uh, he's whiffed on a few line drive soft liners at him at third base. Other than that, like, this, this man is outrageous. Another home run for Machado into the fifth now with a runner in scoring position. I thought we were going to get one over the wall. We do not, but we do hit a double later in the inning. We score another one. Matt Carpenter is going to ground out to end the rally. We leave two in, uh, on base, one in scoring position, but enough damage is done. We go into the ninth up by three where he leads it off with an extra base hit. Not going to go down without a fight. Chase Sutley, though, going to come up, chop one. Taylor Rogers will make the play. Rogers acting as our closer because I was going to Britain in the sixth and seventh innings of this game if it was tied or i was up one in the middle innings i was going to britain and treating those middle to late innings like the ninth inning so that i could have a bigger lead for the ninth inning if it's one one or two one i want to score the next run in those kind of games so i was going to britain earlier than usual he was our mvp pitcher but rogers was shutting it down and getting all the saves in our next game you matched up with marcus stroman where we get started with another first inning bomb from jock peterson we were phenomenal Phenomenal in the first inning of this run look in, in hindsight we were crushing the ball in the first inning that was not jock's only homer by the way he hits two a line drive home run out to center field moonshot gives us a two-run lead which we would need because he gets one back in the top of the fourth a devers solo shot makes it 2-1 off of carlos carrasco who has continued to pitch really really well for us in this series he had a great season had that long start earlier in this run a really good start in this one we did have to lift them in the fourth here for kenley jansen he kind of started to get figured out but almost gets through four only gives up one run and leaves the ball game 2-1 our opponent, though, in the next inning, I, I almost wanted you guys to see that again. Rewind that and watch it again. Cedric Mullins just clipped the outside of the foul pole there, and it shot into the fans. I've actually never seen that animation in the game. It was kind of sick. The sad part here is right after he homers to tie this game, I went into the bullpen to make a swap for Jansen, and we got put in a freeze-off. So once again, we are just stuck here. Terrible terrible timing in the middle of what i was assuming would be a win streak to hopefully push us to world series we actually ended up spending two hours 
on that screen two hours look up at the top there rank seasons may 30th 258 it was just after noon when i started that game it was nearly three o'clock when it ended so now we're at about 8 35 i think our rating was and we've only got three and a half hours like we have like three hours to get in now it's do or die that freeze off put some handcuffs on us here jog peterson once again getting us started early with a two-run bomb in the top of the first machado then with a perfect perfect the other way that's gonna one hop the wall for a long single and then matt carpenter with nobody out he'll be the first out of this inning we have a uh, fielder's choice to second base. He couldn't get the double play there. A couple batters later, Corey Seager, though, is going to double our lead on a no doubter to center. These created stadiums are just fun houses for home runs, man. I, I, I'm not going to lie, though. I like it. It's more fun than the 2 1, 1 0, 3 2. Everyone's lining out, and whoever gets the first no doubter to kick in. I, I prefer these games over that one. But uh, 4 0. Going into the bottom of the first of this ball game. So early, we are out in front. Al Leiter, who I use as a long relief pitcher earlier in this run. He's going to give up his first run in the first inning here. A sinker up to Mookie Betts. And you're going to see Mookie Betts popping up here again later. John Peterson went yard in the first. He's back up in the second. And a nice play at the wall by Yelich to keep that ball in and keep it at 4-1. That was going to hop the wall and score a run. I said you guys are going to see Mookie again. Mookie's next at bat, bottom three, hits another home run on the same pitch. Makes it 4-2. to two. And then our Mookie Betts rips one out to left. That is an absolute missile for a one-out double. So Mookie's got two homers and a double between the two of us. Maurer then follows that up with a barrel of his own. That's high off the wall. A long RBI single for Joe Maurer. Gets one of those homers back, makes it 5-2. We're up by three in the fourth with one on, or two on, one out, I apologize. Can tell Marte flies out to left. Two outs now for Jock Peterson, who's already gone yard once, and he's going to chop one on the right side. Big opportunity there to really bury him and put this game away, but we screwed it up. We missed our opportunity. We weren't done hitting, though. In the sixth, after getting a couple zeros, Seager goes no doubt the other way with a line drive home run. And then Machado in the very next inning does it again. A line drive home run on that hanging curveball makes it 7-2. to two. We do end up pulling away from this guy. Seager wasn't done. Perfect, perfect. Lefty, lefty. Nine to two. And we are suddenly rolling. Maybe I need a three hour freeze off. That was a 484 foot lefty, lefty home run. Maybe I need a freeze off break in between my games more often. Rob Dibble coming out in the ninth with a seven run lead. He's going to end up shutting the door here and getting us the win. He's going to get the ground ball to Sandberg to end the ball game in the 0-2. And we win it. Jock Peterson goes parallel two. Seager goes parallel three. Our record now at this point was 40 and 15. And we are 856 on the rating scale with a little over two hours left to go we really have no room for error here jock peterson who's been homering like in the first inning of every game it seems got a really good swing there but a little bit of pci penalty ball went straight up in the air on us didn't go anywhere and we get nothing in the first bottom of the first now he got a lead off walk and then he went hit and run and it works out to perfection hit the ball on the ground gets him over to third and now he's going to try and bring him home on the sacrifice fly which he will i should have just shot that straight home with mookie the uh, cutoff man was in a little bit of a weird position there. one nothing is the score. We get a strikeout to end the inning. So it could have been worse, but he does take the lead. Now, Sandy is pitching in the bottom of the second. Vinny, again, a leadoff walk. Did that in both innings to start this ball game. JP Crawford on deck. Seager in there now. And Seager with an early dagger off the foul pole. A full count, two run bomb. He's got three runs on two hits. We got to start battling back. Jazz pinch hitting in the first spot up for the pitcher. Gonna go to the bench and we get one back into the upper tank. You like Jazz? Makes it three to one. And from there, we pitched a great game the rest of the way through in this one our opponent couldn't get anything going top of the fourth after homering with jazz in the third we hit a homer with jock in the fourth he had a great swing first time up this one gets over the wall it's now a one run ball game with plenty of ball game left manny flies out to center hanging slider we want back we just missed it 
and say the same about this Matt Carpenter swing on that splitter. Just missed it. That was a really good long 3-2 count there from Matt Carpenter. We just missed that splitter. Sandberg then comes up with two outs. All on that sinker and jumps up off the barrel, but we're just a little underneath and it stays in the ballpark. So many almost swings for us here in the middle innings of this ball game. Another one there from Joe Maurer. He flies out to left to start off the fifth. Two batters later, or Seager, I'm sorry. Two batters later, Joe Maurer, same thing, just off the end of the bat. Top of the sixth, Juan Soto gonna lead things off, and he gets one to drop. Finally, someone finds some grass. A leadoff single that is followed up by a very hard hit, barreled up ball could tell Marte gets a sinker out over the plate he hits it hard but he was a little out in front and that's a 106 mile per hour double play ball followed up by a line out to right by jock and in the blink of an eye we go from the meat of our order coming up nobody out to a three up three down inning and we go into the seventh with three four five coming up where we do absolutely nothing again sandberg just under a fastball up and away and not only does it stay in the yard he gets a spectacular catch animation to kick in and he catches it leaping at the wall we have come so close in this game we have two at bats to go this man still at this point in the eighth inning has just two hits he has scored all three of his runs on two hits he has nothing else to show for it we have come so close so many times we get a one out walk from Mookie Betts Maurer gets a fastball that we were underneath he pops it up immediately I was trying to take advantage of a first pitch fastball there we missed it next batter David Justice off the bench he's gonna slice one out to left for a single other base hit puts two on with two outs for Marte and Marte missed a meatball oh Marte Marte got screwed by the game last at back it's screwed by user error on that cutter down the middle and this game has so far just been the game of missed opportunity our opponent has taken advantage of his though he's only had two chances and he's put it over the wall both times in the eighth inning no different he gets one on he does get his third hit of the ball game there in the eighth but he strands him now we're into the ninth where we're gonna get weird and start things off bunting against the shift with jock we went on against the shift. We had no one left on our bench at this point in the game because we ran the bullpen so early. So I just decided to bunt against the shift. It worked. Machado then comes up. That's a great slider from Rogers for the strikeout. 2-2 two, two count. Going to be a curveball in the dirt. So now it's 3-2 with one out. The tie France who's platooning with Matt Carpenter here. And this was just the dagger deflator. Curveball actually hit Ty France, but they say we went around on our swing. So not only is it a strikeout, the runner who took second has to go back to first and then Sandberg gets a first pitch sinker that he hits hard but right at second base to end the game and there were so many sequences in that game right there where like like you just saw in the matter of two pitches we go from a great situation to bang two outs happen just didn't do enough on my end that was not just a winnable game a game we absolutely should have won and i did not do enough to get it done so now we're at about an hour and 45 minutes to get in and i am at 8 36 which means i gotta win like three maybe even four games in a row to get this done depends on who we get matched up with this one right here is a must win if we're gonna have any chance to get in at all it's probably gonna require a rage quit or two we have to win this game so we strapped in we tightened our bootstraps and we're ready to roll couple good swings there in the first but we do leave a runner at first base we get nothing for it skipping into the fourth this was a pitcher's duel early but once again we're gonna get things started with a jock peterson home run very mvp like run from jock the only reason we're not going to keep him is because we could potentially get him in another player of the month pack so he could return absolute beast seager now Someone who has been featured in both seasons. Doubles our score, makes it 2-0. And I'm going to skip into the seventh here where it's actually a 3-1 game. Our opponent scored his first. We tacked on one more. Uh, but he's going to pop up with the bases loaded to end that inning. And that's where he ended up pulling the plug. So he popped up there with the bases loaded. And that was only about a 20 to 25 minute game. We got that win back. We got that loss back. And our rating is now back up over 850 with a 41 and 16 record. And there's still over an hour. If I can win this game 
right here. It'll put our rating at about 880. And if I can just get into that next game before the time limit ends, there's a chance that we could get in. So once again, this is a must win game. And we started with two singles, followed by a Manny Machado mood shot out to left. That's robbed by Aaron Judge at the wall. A hanging slider right down the middle. We were just a hair under it. It had enough. It cleared the wall, but Aaron Judge brought it back. And with one out after the robbed homer, Matt Carpenter fouls off a changeup right there that we desperately want back. We've seen Jacob DeGrom one other time on this run, so we shouldn't have any problem seeing him. But right there, we have one of my worst swings of the entire day in the worst possible times. And after the strikeout, we get a first pitch front door slider, which I was looking for. That ball actually went right through my PCI. It passed right through my PCI, but uh, we didn't put the PCI on it. We missed it. I got the pitch I wanted, but we didn't take advantage. And after hitting a three-run homer, we literally hit a three-run homer, we get nothing. Nothing! Our opponent scores in the bottom of the second. Just like that, it goes from up three to down one in the bottom of the second. The Grom strikes out to end the inning, and we will go into the third. We're going to skip into the fifth, though, where Joe Mauer comes up huge. Slices that slider. That slider hung up too much. Got too much plate, and we put it over the wall. Finally, we score our first run after a three-run homer was brought back in the first is crazy as you guys uh, can tell that uh, that home run's been haunting me for the last 24 hours as i've been putting this video together one one into the six matt carpenter gets a fastball not a bad swing i don't know if it was us being just a little under it or the fact that we were on the late side of good uh that killed the exit velo on that but it just didn't go and of course the bottom half of that very same inning ronald acuna gets one to sneak over the wall he takes the lead. Ronald does the damage, and that's just not a good look. Next batter, or a couple batters later, going to fly out to right. Got a runner on now. Two outs. That one's going to bleed. It's looking like we got to get Taylor Rogers out of this game. But he makes the mistake of getting thrown out at 30. Makes the third. Oh. You thought, right? Yeah, I know, right? I thought the same thing. I thought he was out of third when it happened. I even thought he was out of third again there when I was calling the shot. He was safe. Next batter was out. Top of the seventh. As you would know, after going down one in the bottom half, we start the inning with a line drive to center. Brings up Seeger with one out where he ends up going down swinging, got called on a check swing. Instead of running it out, he argues with the umpire and gets thrown out at first base. Just whammies all over the place here ever since that home run. He goes the other way in the bottom of the seventh, leads things off with a double, and you can just feel the momentum shift when he hit that home run. Sandberg, though, trying to get it back. Diving stop on the right side. Keeps that runner on the base paths. He hasn't scored. We get the out at first. Next batter, going to put him on. Set up the double play, but he steals second. And Chase Utley in there, flies out the center. I actually thought about putting Chase Utley on there and uh, just setting up the double play, but we already had a strike on him, so I decided to go after him. It works out. He flies out. And then Ronald Acuna comes up where I thought I was going to have a chance to keep myself in this game. But Ronald does it again. Sneaks it just over the wall on a pitch that honestly I would throw again. We got a good release on it. It clipped to the corner. Maybe want that in a little bit more. I know he was under it, though, just because, you know, if Ronald barrels that up, it goes 490. So, you know, he was a little bit under it since it just scraped over the wall. I would throw the same pitch again. It is what it is. Ronald's the man. It gives them a 5-1 lead. And now we need four runs and two innings to stay alive on this run. Salvador Perez strikes out. We got a runner in scoring position. And Cattell Marte is not done. We still have time to fire up another game. We need two runs in the ninth. Can we make it happen? Uki Betts going to squeeze the first out in the bottom of the eighth. Second batter is going to fly out to left. Doc Peterson will make that play. And then in a 2-0 count, Salvi pops it up. Our final three outs to extend this run. Ty France goes down looking on a dot. I'm not, I, I mean, that was just a paint job. Sandberg then line drive that snagged by Utley. The no look behind the back snag. And then Corey Seager flies out to end. Can you believe that Chase Utley catch? I was just devastated. And as you can see though, the game ended at five 
48. So we still had time to start one more game. And if we had won, whatever our rating was post game would have counted. We would have had a chance to get in if we could have pulled away with that one. But once again, we will finish just shy of World Series. So unfortunately, once again, we hit the wall right in the middle of championship series. And I really just didn't give myself any room for error. Granted that loss to my guy Vinny and then that tough loss immediately after we went from being in championship series to like a 740 rating in the blink of an eye in the matter of two hours. So this season we were planning on starting our ranked seasons grind in championship series already with an extra day or two to grind it out. Instead, I hit my side, just went ahead and I dropped the ball two games in a row. I set myself back and once again, we ended up not having enough time to get in. We ended last season at an 828 rating. This season, we end just shy of 860. So there actually was an extra win or two there in progress. So we will once again start the new rank season at a 700 rating. We are 41 and 17 overall in pack squads this year. Technically, we are making progress. I typically like to make a pack squads video, upload it, see your feedback, make some adjustments if we have to, record the next episode, bam, and I repeat that process. I think doing that all the way up to the end of the month has handcuffed me a little bit. I gotta play more games. So this season I will be ending the episode grind a little bit shorter. And to combat that, we will be keeping the premium pack reward post game on wins even during the montage grind. I'm not gonna go super crazy and do full on pack squads and open packs after every, but moving forward, when we do the montage grind at the end of every season, I can open a diamond pack after each win. I also think it'll make these montage videos a little bit more fun because we could potentially get crazy pulls along with all the extra gameplay in these long finale videos at the end of the season. Once again though, next season at the start of season three, we're gonna have an all silver squad plus our MVP keeper and our Cy Young keeper. We have to keep one position player, one pitcher, and then an all silver squad. We are also going to be opening some packs. If we can get lucky with some packs, that would be nice. But base packs, silver build, one MVP, one Cy Young. We'll see what the team's looking like in episode one of season three. I need your thoughts in the comment section down below though on who you think the MVP should be. The obvious answer and is, is my choice is going to be Cattell Marte, though. The 93 overall switch hit second half card just is going to have a crazy big PCI and hits for power against both sides. We batted 309 with 11 extra base hits in 24 games with this Cattell Marte, and he's got so much position versatility as well. And honestly, the weird thing is he actually didn't hit great when we first picked him up on All-Star, and it was actually on Hall of Fame where he started smoking them all over. I mean, he had a three extra base hit in one of those games during the montage today. Dude was hitting moonshots left and right, both sides of the plate. But then again, there's also live series Manny Machado, who's now up to a 90 overall. Typically his inside edge has him up to a 93, 94, sometimes 95 overall, always has that righty righty boost. We batted 300 with him with six extra base hits in 21 games and he plays nasty defense in the field, although I do think his fielding could come up a little bit more. Joe Maurer is a guy we've had in both seasons for pack squads. He's up to a parallel two force now. He's batting 300 over 28 games, eight extra base hits. There's just something about this card. He always, I don't know if it's like the quirks that he has on, some pressure cooker might be the reason, I, I don't know, but the guy gets big hits for me. He had a line drive home run to tie one of those games during this run. He comes up clutch. I had a comment on the last video. Why was he batting in the three hole? He did end up sliding down um, for some of those games during the run, but the guy's clutch for me, if I'm being honest. His 96 is unreal and the swing on the 88 is really fast. And you got Jock Peterson who's batting 426 with 13 extra base hits. He's got the inverted splits, but I mean, most of the time, other than when you're seeing like Randy Johnson or Dallas Keuchel, He's getting that 108, 117 advantage, and you can plug him in between two righties to try and get that at bat late in games. Jock Peters is kind of nasty. He's a player of the month though, so we low key could get him again in another pack for the next season. Whereas someone like Cattel Marte would be pure luck if we got him again. Same rule applies to Manny Machado. Now the pitching staff, this is where it's gonna be like super difficult because for me, I almost feel like we should go to a relief pitcher 
this season. We kept Randy Johnson from season one to season two. Uh, we can't keep him again, obviously, since we kept him once. He's all, all the way up to parallel four now, five pitch mix. But he's kind of started to get lit up there anyway. I think now that people are seeing the 99 Randy Johnson more often and quite frequent, when you see the 88 Randy Johnson, it's kind of just a uh, softer, bigger PCI, not as dominant version of that card. It's really, it's just the easier version of a card that's pretty popular in the game now. So he's just at a really bad disadvantage. Even though we have him up to a 91 overall, he got lit up a few times in this vid. Pablo Lopez has a really good pitch mix. Al Leiter has a really good pitch mix. Carlos Carrasco was big for us. He pitched five games, 26 innings, 2.77 ERA. But man, I tell you what, we should really think about Zach Britton out of the bullpen. Could just shut it down for us. He pitched in nine games, 14 and two thirds, 0 0.61 ERA. 22 strikeouts. I can go to him at any point against any batter in a big spot in, in any game, and he can just shut it down and then go for two innings if he needed to. So I think it's between Carlos Carrasco, Zach Britton, and I think the batters are between Cattell Marte and Manny Machado. But I want to hear your thoughts. I want to see you guys liking comments down below, and I'll see you guys in episode one of season three very soon. There's going to be some minor adjustments, like I said, to the structure. We'll talk about it in the next one. I'll see y'all then. Peace.